Good morning to all of you who are getting online right now. As I just stated, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? going to be in Psalms 103 this morning. Psalms 103. And before we begin, just a housekeeping announcement, as they say, next Sunday you will be hearing from one of the ministers at our church, Pastor Harry Thomas. Junior, coming to us from Montgomery County, he recently moved from Jacksonville, Jacksonville, to Florida. He is a dynamic man of God, and he will be bringing forth a powerful word next week, along with serving the serving of the Lord's table. So we invite you back to join us again next Sunday at the same time. Amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer as we begin his word this morning. Father, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and are glad in it. We thank you for the rain that fell overnight, for allowing it to saturate the ground and help the grass to grow and the trees to bud. We pray that you will encourage us now this morning with a powerful word from the Lord, that when we are done this morning we will be able to say it was good that we were hearing the word of the lord this morning we ask that you might bless the speaker bless all those under the sound of my voice and might we have a reason and realize that we do have a reason to give you praise this morning from the sanctuary of our hearts bless your word now we pray in jesus name the name that is above every name amen if you have the word with you this morning, turn with me to Psalms 103, Psalms 103, and when you find it, say praise the Lord. And let's read together verses 1 through 5, Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen to the reading of the word of God. In this time that we're living in today, amidst all of the discouragement that some are feeling or having, amidst all of the quarantine that we're all involved in, we have to recognize a few facts. And one of the main facts we have to recognize this morning is that we still have a reason to bless the Lord. And we still should be blessing the Lord. The psalmist starts out by saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all. Somebody say all. All that is within me, bless his holy name. We've got to learn that no matter what we're feeling, whether we're healthy, whether we're not totally healthy, whether, whether we could travel, whether we can't travel, we have a reason to bless the Lord. And that blessing has to come from your soul. It has to come from the inside out. You have to bless him with everything you got, with everything, every fiber of your being. You should realize you have a reason. You have reasons with an S to bless the Lord. You can bless the Lord because you have another day. You could bless the Lord because he still is your hope. You bless the Lord because he still is your salvation. You, you are blessed the Lord because he is still providing all of your needs. You, you can bless the Lord because he is still keeping you 
and your family in the midst of this crisis. You have a reason, and this is your season, to bless the Lord. You need to bless his holy name because our God is still on the throne. Our God is still awesome. Our God is still holy. He is still King of kings and Lord of lords. And yes, from your soul, from the inside out, you need to be blessing the Lord this morning. You need to bless him for keeping you through another night, for allowing you to get to sleep as you did, whether that be four hours, five hours, six hours, eight hours, ten hours. You need to be blessing the Lord. He is still holy. He is still in control. He is still all powerful. You need to bless the Lord. You, you have a home. You still have a family. You still have love in your heart that comes from knowing the Lord. You need to bless the Lord. You need to bless the Lord. Bless his holy name. You need to bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You, it's one thing to hear others praise the Lord, and that's a great thing when we could all praise the Lord together. But sometimes you got to bless the Lord for yourself. You've got to praise the Lord yourself. It's got to be your praise. You can't live off of somebody else's praise. Okay? you got to praise God for yourself. For another Sunday, for another Tuesday, for another Wednesday, for another Thursday, for another Friday, for another Saturday. You've got to praise the Lord for every day that he gives you on this side of heaven. You've got to bless the Lord from the inside out. Because in spite of it all, in spite of the news, in spite of the headlines, God is still keeping you and keeping us. You've got to learn that you've got to bless the Lord. No, it's not easy, but it's not supposed to be easy. God is still God. And he is still providing for you day after day after day. Oh, my soul. This has got to come from the inside out, not the outside in. You can't wait for somebody else to praise the Lord for you. You've got to learn to praise the Lord for yourself. One day we will be back in the church building, but the building does not make the church. We make up the church. And we don't need to be together just to bless the Lord. You should be blessing the Lord from the quietness of your home. You should be blessing the Lord every day, as someone just said. You should be giving God praise because he's keeping you. You still have, you might not have perfect health, but you got good health. You got enough health to keep going and to keep pursuing the purposes that God has for you. That praise has got to come from you for all that God is doing. Verse 2 goes on to tell us, after he tells us, oh my soul, that blessing has got to be personal, by the way. It's got to be a personal praise. You ought to have a personal praise for the Lord. You ought to lose the attitude and start taking up with the gratitude because God is being good to you. Well, I just want to get out. I just, I just can't take this much longer. I, I got to get away. You better thank God that he's keeping you where you are. And when the time comes for you and I and us to get together and to get away, we're blessed the Lord even more. But right now, you bless the Lord right now because he's keeping you. Sometimes we forget when we're going through difficult times in our life how good God has been to us and how good God is to us. Notice what verse 2 says, the end of verse 2. Don't forget all his benefits. Do you know that there are benefits for being a child of God? Do you know that there are benefits that come with knowing him as your personal Lord and Savior? Do you know that there are benefits to praising him? You know, when you get a job, when you have a career that you want, uh, it used to be that, well, you wanted to get the highest salary you could get. And obviously, you would still want to get a high salary. But what we've come to realize is what, what is just as important, in fact, more important, is the benefits. The job that you get 
it's not just the salary you want, but you want the benefits. You want the health insurance. You want the life insurance. You want the retirement plan. You want the days, the, uh, you, you know, all that comes with the work that you have done. And in Psalms 103, verse 2, he tells us, don't forget the benefits. You know, I'm thankful that I'm saved, but it doesn't stop there. I have so many benefits. Verse 3 gives us one of the first benefits in Psalms 103. He forgives all our iniquities. If you go down to verse 12, it tells us in that same chapter, Psalms 103, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. God knows we're just human people living in this natural world. He understands that, as the old song says, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. He understands that sometimes we're going to fall down. But bless God, he forgives us. And he remembers our sins no more. Somebody say all again. He forgives all our iniquities. The Bible tells us there is none that doeth good righteousness, no, not one. We should strive to do our best every day, and I'm hoping and praying that, including your pastor, that we all try to do our best every day. But sometimes we're going to fail. Sometimes we're going to fall. Thank God that he forgives our iniquities. He forgives our shortcomings. He allows us back into his presence. He allows us to keep a seat in the kingdom. He allows us peace and joy. He allows us to be forgiven when we confess our sins to him. The Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from, again, that big, small word, all our iniquities, all of our sins. He forgives us. He forgives us. That's a benefit of knowing Jesus and more importantly, of Jesus knowing you. That's a benefit that if we just confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us from all unrighteousness. What a benefit that is. You know, people go through life being upset with family, not talking to family, not talking to friends for decades, for years, because they can't forgive the wrong that somebody has done to them. We all have seen families hurt, families destroyed by those who just can't forgive each other and move on. We have to understand, folks, the Bible makes it clear that if we want God to forgive us, and he will, we have to forgive others. And by the way, when we hold that grudge and don't forgive, the other person in most cases have moved on. It's only hurting ourselves when we don't forgive. Can you imagine if God said, I'm going to forgive you of most of your sins, but those three I'm not going to forgive you for? But by the grace of God. But by the grace of God. Thank God he forgives all our iniquities. That's a benefit of knowing him. That's a benefit of receiving him. That's a benefit of trusting in him. That's a benefit of living for him. That's a benefit of him being our Savior. And then the psalmist goes on to say, he heals all of our diseases. He heals all of our sicknesses. We have had physical ailments. We have had emotional ailments. We have had mental ailments. We've had all kinds of ailments in our life. I know God has healed me multiple times and raised me back up to good health multiple times over the last four or five years. I know more than one time I was just as, as, as close to being home with the Lord as I was, in fact, closer than I was being back home with my family. But God. Many of us have a testimony, whether it be of ourselves or of our children or of our parents, of our family members, where we know God intervened just in time. 
Praise God for that. Well, you say, okay, well, Pastor Wolf, that's the case. Well, people do die. Yes, they die, but yet they live. They're still healed. They are now, when, when we lose somebody, we are now praising God because if they were a child of God, they're healed forevermore. No more sickness, no more sorrow, no more pain. Yes, he heals all of our diseases. That's a benefit that we could go to the Lord. He not only will forgive us, but he will restore us. He will touch us. You know, when you have little aches and pains, you need to praise God even when you have those little aches and pains. Because guess what? That's all they are, is little aches and pains. God gives you the strength. God gives you the power to work through it and to go through it. And yes, he restores and he heals and he delivers. Some people can't walk this morning. Some people can't talk this morning. Some people can't move this morning. Thank God. Whatever is wrong with you, you're still able to move around. You might have to moan a couple times now and again. Strange noises might come out of your body sometime. But you're still here. And God is still touching you. And God is still healing you. That's the benefit of knowing him. Another benefit is he redeems your life from destruction. You know that, but by the grace of God, we were on our way to a Christless eternity. But by the grace of God, if he didn't save us, we'd still be hooked on everything else but hooked on phonics. But by the grace of God, we'd be in the rehab still today. But by the grace of God, calling us from the miry pit and establishing us and setting our feet upon the rock, we be still destroying ourselves. But by the grace of God, the damage that we have caused to ourselves in our previous life apart from knowing the Lord, he has restored us. He has given us a home. He has set us free from being an alcoholic, from being dependent upon drugs, from being dependent upon things that are harmful to our bodies and to our souls and to our own spirits. He has redeemed us from that destruction. We did some crazy things prior to knowing the Lord, and quite frankly, even after knowing him, sometime we pushed it kind of far. But praise be to God, bless the Lord. That when we did some of those crazy things that we did back in the day, even though we didn't know it at the time, God had a plan for your life, God had a plan for my life, and he restored us. He's healed the scars. He's healed the bruises. He restored our life from destruction. What a benefit there is to knowing the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. What a benefit there is to know that all the harm and damage that we have caused ourselves, that our God has redeemed us, made us just like new. Yes, it is true. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. That accident that you got into years ago because you were just out there acting wild, those things that you put in your body because you were just out there acting wild, God has redeemed you from that destruction. He's given you a new life. He's given you a great life. He's given you eternal life. What a benefit. What a benefit. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He doesn't just give us love. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. You, we can't comprehend that love. We just have to praise God for it and receive it and accept it. Thank God that he showed us his love by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross. And he didn't just die, but he rose again. And he gives us life. Thank the Lord. You ought to be praising the Lord right now for the love that he shows you. It's a benefit of being his child. You could like other children, you could help other children, but you don't love nobody like you love your own children. 
thank God that he loves us and he crowns us with that love. Song of Psalms 2.4 tells us he brought me to the banqueting table and his banner over me is love. He brought us from destruction and set us on the table, at the table, and over us he put his love. Praise God for that. That's a benefit of knowing our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. He gives us his love. In spite of who we are, in spite of how we don't always have a great day, in spite of how sometimes more often than not we fall short, God still loves his people. Paul tells us in Romans, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Romans chapter 8. Let's look at that text to see how powerful God's love is to us. His love and His kindness. Turn, if you will, to Romans chapter 8. And let's look at verse 31. And when you found it, say, praise the Lord. God is good. Romans chapter 8, 31. What shall we say then to these things? These things. All the benefits that God gives us. All the love that God gives us. The fact that He died for us. What shall we say to these things if God be for us who can be against us go down to verse 35 of Romans chapter 8 who shall separate us from the love of Christ who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword and I'm gonna add another one or quarantine or COVID-19, or a positive test, or a negative test. Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. However, in all these things, there's that word all again, in all these things, we are more. Somebody say, I am more. I am more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, somebody say, I am persuaded, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor COVID-19 right now, nor COVID-19 in the fall, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank God for his love. Nothing separates us from that love of God through Christ Jesus. That is the benefit that we have of knowing him. You ought to be praising God for the love that you have in Christ Jesus. Thank God that nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. You have to be persuaded that no matter what we're going through, Nothing is going to separate you from that love because we are more than conquerors. Go back to Psalms 103. So a benefit again, another benefit. He redeems our life from destruction, verse 4. He crowns us with loving kindness. He doesn't just give us love, but God is kind to his people. God is gentle to us. He understands our frame. He knows that, that again, as I said earlier, like that old song says, we're prone to wander from him sometime but he is kind toward his people loving kindness what powerful two words to put together love and kindness he crowns us he 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 puts that over us he places that over our heads over our life his love and kindness and yes yes we got to thank god that a benefit of knowing him is also his tender mercies. Not just mercies, but his tender mercies. You know, what's one thing to have, if, if I could use the analogy of a good steak, it's one thing to have a steak. It's another thing to have a tender steak. Okay? That, that tastes a little different than just any steak. You want your meat to be tender. Well, God gives us tender mercies. It's a benefit of knowing him. 
day after day after day. Turn with me to Lamentations chapter 3 real quick. Lamentations chapter 3. Something you have to understand. And even more so in this day and time that we're living today. Because it's a benefit to receive the tender mercies of God. Lamentations chapter 3. And this whole chapter would be good for you to read as you go through this time. The first half talks about despair and talks about why is all these things happening to us and to me and to the author um, of this book. But then in verses 19, it goes on to talk about the hope that we have. Let's pick it up in Lamentations 3 and verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. You've got to recall some things to your mind. You've got to remember how good God has been to you. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not destroyed because his compassions don't fail us. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Praise God for his tender mercies. We have a new mercy every single day. Every morning I have a habit of getting up and going to the front door, opening up the door and just looking outside and seeing everything being well and just thanking God for a new day. Thanking God that all is well. Thanking God for another day of his mercy, another day of his grace. We should be calling to mind because it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions don't fail us. They are new every morning. Every day is a new day. Every day shows us a new mercy of God. And we should be blessing the Lord, oh my soul, from the inside out. We should have a praise. We should have a praise. Because it is truly because of the Lord's mercies that we are not being consumed because his compassions don't fail. Every day is a brand new mercy, as that song says, we see every day. Yes, you should praise the Lord. And then one of the last bits we want to talk about this morning is found in verse 5. He satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. He satisfies thy mouth with good things. You know, in the midst of being quarantined, God's mercy has allowed you and allowed me to still bear to eat the things we want to eat. Rather you like me this morning and got roast turkey parts in your oven that you're going to fix up later, or rather you're going to order some food from the outside or cook something on the inside, thank God that you can satisfy your mouth with good things. Do you know how fortunate, how blessed we are to still be able to eat the foods that we want to eat and enjoy what we want to enjoy every day? You know how blessed we are of God, by God, to still have food to eat and can order the things we want to order and still eat healthy food and whether it be meat food products or non-meat vegan non-vegan you you realize how great god is that you can satisfy your mouth with good things i don't care if you're eating chicken or veggies three four five days a week you better thank god that you have that and that you could enjoy the blessings of the bounty that god gives you every day you don't generally eat what you don't like or what you don't want to eat you satisfy your mouth with good things, and you thank the Lord for that. That's a benefit. God even looks out for us for the small things. We have such an awesome God that looks out even for the small details for his children. He even wants to satisfy us with good food to eat. Bless God for that. He wants to give us good things. He forgives our iniquities. He heals our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction. He gives us loving kindness and a brand new mercy every day. Then he satisfies our mouth so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. 
You know this verse, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. Isaiah 40. This is what he does for us. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Even in the midst of this crisis, even in the midst of being quarantined, the word of God still holds true. Verse 31 tells us, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Even in the midst of what all of us are going through right now as a country, as a people, as a nation, as a family, as individuals, if we continue to wait upon the Lord, we will, we will renew our strength and we will run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. He will satisfy our mouth with good things. He will redeem our life from destruction. He will continue to give us loving kindness and his tender mercies. He will continue to forgive us of our sins. He will continue to forgive us of our sins. He will continue to heal our diseases. But we got to bless the Lord. His praise has to be continually in our mouth. Continually means every time you open up your mouth, you should have a reason to praise the Lord. Because of his goodness. Yes, it's been a long time in this process and it's not over yet. But God is still being good to you. God is still being good to me. God has been good to us, and he will continue to be good to us. He will continue to give us reasons to bless the Lord. So my word of encouragement to you this morning is, in spite of what you're feeling, in spite of it being a difficult time, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, because God is still being good to you. He is still redeeming you from destruction. He is still keeping you from destruction. He is still giving you all the mercy that you need every day. He is still giving you strength to get up and move about every day so that your strength is renewed like that eagle who just glides along the clouds with very little effort. Yes, in spite of it all, bless the Lord. O oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Father, I thank you so much for all those under the sound of my voice who have heard the word of the Lord this morning. I pray that this will be the day that if they haven't been giving you the praise, that they will bless the Lord and not forget all of your benefits toward us. Might we be a thankful people this morning. Might we be a grateful people because... You still have never left us, nor will you ever leave us, nor forsake us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. If you are here this morning listening online, and maybe you don't know how to bless the Lord because you're not a part of his family, now is the time for you to place your trust in our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Now is the time for you to receive him into your life. Now is the time for you to... Realize what the scripture says, that whoever comes to me, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Now is your opportunity to call upon the name of the Lord and simply say this, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save me. I receive you into my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and I place my trust in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If you have said that prayer and you want to know how to walk closer with him, I encourage you to contact our church through our website, MontgomeryBaptist.com. I encourage you, if you are a child of God, to take a moment to reflect on how good God is to you and how he has kept you even through this storm. And that every day he is keeping you and redeeming you day by day. And when it's all said and done, remember what Paul said in Romans, nothing separates us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Be encouraged this day, be encouraged tomorrow, and I hope you were encouraged yesterday. Again, I want to remind all of you that next Sunday, being the first Sunday, we will hear a word from Pastor Harry Thomas, a junior. He is a powerful man of God, one of the, the ministers at our church. I encourage you to tune in again next week. 
We will also be serving the Lord's table. And I encourage you just to thank the Lord for another day, for your family, for your faith, for your health. Always being confident that he which has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day he returns. This crisis that we're going through does not stop God from working in you, nor should it stop us from blessing his holy name. Amen. Have a blessed and fruitful week. God bless you.